Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go over five DaVinci Resolve tips or tricks that I use in almost every single project to really take my videos to the next level. These are five secrets above and beyond the typical color grading process. Some of these you might not know. Let's hop right in. Okay, so the first tip is using HSV to really get a cinematic, vibrant look to your footage. So HSV is something that a lot of colorists use, a lot of your favorite YouTubers use. And basically what it does is boost color intensity without changing brightness, which helps preserve skin tones and shadow roll offs. To achieve this, it's super simple. I just have my grade set up into compound nodes right here, but somewhere along your grade, if you just go ahead and create a serial node, option S on Mac, what you wanna do is go ahead and right click it, go to your channels, make sure channel one and channel three are deselected. So only channel two is selected on this node. Right click again and then go into your color space and just make sure that HSV is selected. Once you've got your HSV set up, I like to rename it just so it's easy to HSV and then go down into your color wheels. And now if you adjust the gain, just watch what happens. As we're increasing gain, you'll notice that the overall basically vibrancy and richness of this image increases and it looks a lot more pleasing than let's say instead if I just crank the saturation traditionally, as you'll notice here, the skins get really orange. The overall image kind of evenly just gains in saturation and it doesn't look cinematic, doesn't look pleasing at all. Let's just reset that. Alternatively, if we go into the HSV here again and just go ahead and adjust the gain, you'll notice that just in kind of the richest areas of the image, you're getting a nice increase in saturation. And this is just a quick tip to kind of increase your overall saturation in a pleasing manner without having to work with just the saturation and hue tools. It's honestly just a more balanced way to increase saturation in your image and it just makes it feel a little bit more polished rather than just working inside the saturation panel here. Again, you can place this HSV node inside your color grade. And then once you've done your settings, you just adjust the gain here. And it's a great way to adjust the cinematic saturation of your image. Next up is the color slice tool. And I made a whole video talking about the color slice tool in depth. But real quickly, if you haven't seen that video, it's a really handy tool that I use in every single project. Basically, all I have to do is again, create a serial node, an additional node. Let me just label this as color slice. In this node, all you need to do is go down to this here. This is the color slice slice tool and the color slice tool basically allows you to do selective adjustments in saturation and density across most of the major color tones within your image. So let me just give you an example here. Obviously, there's a lot of yellow in this image and maybe I want to adjust the density on the left hand side here is the density. The right hand side here is the saturation and I can adjust the density here of just the yellows in this image or I can boost the saturation of just the yellows in this image. One of my favorite things to do is adjust just the skin here and I can just adjust the skin tone saturation here really easily or again change the density of his skin tones and this tool is really useful in fine-tuning specific color tones within your image you can additionally change the hue of in this instance just the skin tones you can go ahead and adjust all the major other color groups here if you click this little button here it'll show you what selections you're actually adjusting for each of these color groups here and a quick tip here if you want to know exactly what colors you selecting just click the center here press shift H and it'll show you kind of the the general areas here you can fine-tune the center basically what it's selecting and that way you'll know exactly what areas you're you're adjusting here really easily it gives you peace of mind and the color size tool is amazing I've used it in every single grade in DaVinci Resolve it just allows you to fine-tune specific colors and it allows you to really polish your image because sometimes you do color adjustments and they adjust the overall global image and then you want to go in and fine-tune stuff you used to have to do like selective masks and a bunch of other things but now just using the color size tool makes this whole process a lot easier the next tip is recreating a swirly bokeh or anamorphic look. Now this look is pretty popular currently. It's really easy to do. If you ever shot on like a Petzval or a Helios 44 lens, you'll notice these really cool artifacts or type of bokeh in the background. It's like the swirly, really dreamy look. You can recreate this in DaVinci Resolve, super simple. All you have to do is create two serial nodes. The first one, we're gonna do a mask, but before we do that, on the second node here, what we're gonna do is look up radial blur. I'm gonna click and drag that here. And as you'll notice already, 
You've got this really cool radial blur effect that we're gonna apply to this image. The issue here is that it's affecting the entire image and what we wanna do is just affect a certain part of the image. So in this first node here, what we're gonna do is go over here to window and we're gonna create a circular window and I'm just gonna feather this out, drag this out and feather it out and kind of circle it around my subject, Cody here. And now all you have to do here is just click and drag this blue alpha channel here. So it just affects this area. Once we've done that, just go over here, click invert. And now you'll notice that it's only affecting the areas outside of this power window. So if I just show you a before and after here, that's without the blur, with the blur, without the blur, with the blur and it's super easy. And once you do this, you can actually go ahead and really adjust it to your like, I find like a, a sweet spot is kind of like in this 0.3 range. If you go past that around like four, it gets really crazy. But when you do this kind of subtly and just add it in certain areas to really kind of pinpoint and highlight your subject, you get a really cool look and it kind of mimics that cool quality of anamorphics and it really adds a level of dimension to your grades. Okay, trick number four is super slow-mo or really slowing down your footage to create smooth slow-mo shots from basically any type of footage. Now, there's a couple ways to do this in DaVinci Resolve specifically. All you have to do is go down to your edit tab. Once you're in your edit tab here, all you need to do is right click the footage that you want to slow down. I have shot this at 60 frames per second and this is in a 30 frames per second timeline. Obviously the higher frame rate that you record your footage at, the easier it is to slow down. If you ignore the 180 degree roll and record at a very high shutter speed. So for instance, this is 60 frames per second footage, but instead of one over 125 shutter speed, I've actually cranked this up a little bit to like one over 200. This just allows for less motion blur. And when you're doing this effect, it really allows the computer, the AI to latch on to more data and create smoother slow-mo. So all you have to do is go to your footage, right click and go to retime controls. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is retime this to let's say 25%. Because I've shot this at 60 FPS in a 30 FPS timeline, I should only be able to slow this down to like 50%. But let's go ahead and slow this down to 25%. And the only other thing you need to do is go to retime and scaling. And in the retime process, you're gonna select optical flow, motion estimation, let's do speed warp better, and then resize filter, just select sharper. A cool workflow that I found that works really well is exporting this footage at like 25%. And if you wanna go even further and slow down even further, bring that footage back in DaVinci Resolve and then do the same process over and over again, however many times you like to get that super slow-mo effect it's really useful and it's a fun trick to do in DaVinci Resolve. The final tip is adjusting the hue and saturation of your shadows and highlights independently using a tool called a DCTL. DCTL I think stands for like DaVinci Color Transform Lookup. It's a little bit different than LUTs. It's more accurate, it's much more powerful than your traditional LUTs. There's a wonderful YouTube video of a creator who actually created a DCTL that you can download for free. It's a pay what you will basis, so by supporting his channel, you can go ahead and pay a little bit if you'd like. But he said that if you'd like, you can go ahead and download and try these out at least for free. And the DCTL that I use in every single project is basically a split tone DCTL. I'll link it down below, but all you need to do is create a node, look up DCTL, apply that, and then select the download, you're gonna have to import this, and just select split tone. Split tone is pretty interesting, it's really subtle. You can adjust the pivot, so sort of like the overall kind of highlights and shadows of your image. You can adjust the highlights. You can really adjust the shadows and play with kind of the hue and saturation. You can add or subtract highlights, you can change the hues again, and you can really go in and play with how the shadows versus hues look. A lot of times I like to throw this at the very end of my color grade and just experiment with with a little bit of variation in the shadows and highlights. And sometimes I'll just see if I like it or not. For instance, this image right now, the shadow is a little bit green. And if I wanna add a little bit more magenta and kind of bring it back a little bit, I can go ahead and add this and do a little bit of subtle touch up at the very end to adjust everything overall. And it's something I add at the very end. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but it's really nice to have. Again, if you wanna learn more about this, I'll link it down below in the description. So yeah, those were five DaVinci Resolve tips that hopefully you didn't know before this video. I use a 
combination of all these in every single project, specifically the HSV and Color Slice for coloring. I like to add a little bit of radio blur and do a little bit of fine tuning with the DCTLs. Sometimes depending on the project, I also do the motion adjustment speed trick. If you have any questions on any of these five tools, leave them down in the comments below. And if you have any tips or tricks that I didn't cover in this video, please leave them down below for the community. I'm always interested in learning what the best solution is for color grading and different ways to achieve a very cinematic and filmic look. If you made it to the end of the video, leave the word cinematic down below. I've also got sound effects, presets. It's all available on shop.gakuen.com. Thanks for watching to the very end and I'll see you guys in the next one.